Aloha, Lohali signing in, and today I want to tell you about the crazy tale of Tariko. Now, before we dive into spoiler territory, I'm going to kick it over to Smart Lohali to give you a synopsis so you understand just a little bit how ludicrous this story really is. Thank you very much, regular Lohali. Now, let's get an idea of what this story actually entails. It was written and illustrated by Mitoshi, Mit, Mitsu, 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 I can't say that name, guys. It's over here. Read it yourself. Uh, originally published in 2008 and continued for eight years all the way until 2016. It had over 43 Takubans with over 147 episodes of an anime. Now, it was a great story and it was fun to read. However, it did have a few different things going on. Uh, there was the point in time where the author did team up with Oda to create a quick one shot called The Taste of the Devil Fruit and Mito Mitsu Mitsu Mitsu, you know what I'm trying to say, uh, claims that he basically came up with the entire thing by himself with a few different inputs by Oda himself. Can't say blame Oda because he has his hands full with the greatest epic of all time. Now a quick synopsis for the manga is Toriko is a gourmet hunter searching for the most precious foods in the world so he can create his full course meal. A man with inhuman ability, he utilizes his incredible strength and knowledge of the animal kingdom to capture ferocious, evasive, and rare beasts to further his menu. He is accompanied by the weak and timid chef Komatsu who, inspired by Toriko's ambition, travels with him to improve his culinary skills and to find rare ingredients. Toriko and his friends often fight against the Gourmet Corps, the overarching bad guys of this story, who seek to take control of the world's entire food supply and are looking for the highly sought after ingredient, God, which the legendary gourmet hunter, Acacia, used to end the war that took place 500 years before the series began. Now, like I said, it is a sprawling epic with a bunch of fighting in it. However, that does not properly convey the entire tone of the story. Uh, subjectively speaking, I would say that it focuses on friendship, uh, travels, and really maturing in both a physical and mainly emotional and mental sense as the characters progress from one note to possibly two notes. Overall, this story is a great read. Now, we're going to dive into a little bit more detail with regular Brian. Thank you, Smart Lohali. However, that was not even close to adequate enough to describe the insanity of this story. Now, I want to start off the spoiler territory by talking about two of the main characters, and that is Komatsu and Tariko, the namesake for this tale. Let's start with Komatsu. He is physically weak. He has really no powers whatsoever. He is just strong-willed and strong-spirited, and he really loves cooking. Now, why is it insane that he is in this story? Well, he is the fastest chopping hand in the West. I mean, he learns cooking at an incredibly ridiculous speed. Now, that's not completely over the top. You have characters like Soma in uh, Shokugeki no Soma, and, you know, everyone in Yakite Japan. They learn pretty quickly. So that's not too far out of the norm, and Toriko, honestly enough, is a pretty decent MC. Now, with him, he is this very strong, very muscly, like, we're talking Oliva from Baki. We are talking, basically, Ronnie Coleman from the real world. He is just jacked. And he has the basic set of MC powers. He is very strong-willed. Uh, he learns really quick. He has special abilities. And his special abilities involve throwing, basically, forks with his fingers, knives with his hands. And it's just kind of weird. Basically, utensils, air utensils, are the way that he attacks people. Now, that's not too crazy, like I said. But then you start diving into the secondary MCs. Let's start off with the least crazy of them, and that is Zebra. Zebra. However you want to say his name, he looks basically like Two-Face from Batman. He's missing this side of his cheek right here, uh, and he uses basically his voice to attack and destroy everything, and he also has a ridiculously voracious appetite. Now, that's not too far out of the ordinary. You know, we've seen sound attacks in things like the X-Men. We have seen people with voracious appetites, like Goku. 
But then you start getting into the other two and you have, well, let's go with Sonny. He has the ability to control his hair with his mind. In each one of the hairs in his head is part of a different faction. One of them, one of the factions, is able to taste things. The other is able to reflect attacks back and carry things of ridiculously monstrous proportions. Like, he carried an elephant, like this size of elephant right here, that was able to basically be an entire arc in and of itself because they were traveling through it with one arm. That's ridiculous, insane. Then you have the poison dart frog that is Coco. He literally secretes some of the most insane poisons out of his body. Like we are talking death by sweat is as close as you can get. And each one of these characters also has another ability and that is a super demon inside of them. Something that is just so outlandish. Like this is where the spoilers really start in. They are otherworldly beings that have been reborn inside of these characters that can come out and is basically their appetite that works to eat the world around them. Like, that's not even exaggerating it. These beings that they are controlling that are also tied into their special abilities have at different points in time tried to devour the literal world. Now these are just the good guys. That's not even the animals. Here are a few of the animals. There is the panda with the face on its belly. Pretty basic. The weird, ridiculous three-headed bird, kind of like the Cerebrus dog bird thing. Then you have this weird eel sensory snake handed weird thing. Like it's purple, it's evil, it's demented. And finally, like I said before, you have you have an, a mammoth the size of an actual complex that you are able to adventure through. And these are just the low level monsters of this world. They are edible, they are apparently delicious, and man, it's a crazy ride seeing them fight these guys initially, and then they tra travel to the gourmet com- yeah. And then they travel to the gourmet continent where the animals are even more ridiculously powerful. Like, straight up, some of these animals are able to destroy countries just by sneezing. Yeah, the Heracles horse can destroy the world by sneezing. But then you dive into the bad guys, and you're thinking, Brian, how can it get any more ridiculous? Well, the bad guys have a bunch of different powers. One of them, Tomurod, vomits bugs that can explode, but he also transforms into a bug himself. Yeah, ridiculous, I know. And then you have this guy whose name I can never remember, but he uses a straw to legitimately slurp up everything around him. Like, he sucked up an entire canyon full of BB popcorn. Yeah, this is popcorn that is the size of boulders, and it was canyons full, and he's going with a straw. Can you do that? No. You can probably barely get a cup of water through like 30 seconds of sipping with a straw. I have faith in you, but not that much faith. So these are the characters of the story, but that doesn't even touch on the quest of this story. And this is where everything really, really takes off. It starts off, chapter one, they go after the ga la 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 gator. There's a lot of laws in there. Not entirely accurate in that saying, but seriously. And you're thinking to yourself, man, that's a tough looking gator. It's got six legs. It can smell people out by their blood. Pretty cool. It takes like three tanks to normally take it down. And our MC, Tarika, was going to go after it. Yeah, with his fingers and toes as a fork and a knife. How are you going to fight a crocodile with just your fingers and toes? Steve Irwin would tell you, no, don't do that. Don't be mean to animals. They love you. But Tarico does it anyway. And how does he do it? With relative ease. And that kicks you off with the introduction that Komatsu is a coward with a good heart, and Toriko is strong as all belief. And that was just chapter one. The story progresses higher and higher and higher and higher from there. Like I said, a couple arcs later, we are talking about the gigantic mammoth that, well, kills you by breathing too hard. Or you get introduced to the ultimate bad guys, the Nitros. Yeah, they are weird creatures that their mouth opens up 
in some weird pseudo predator from AVP style of weirdness, like straight up just like that. And they have teeth and tongue and they are ridiculously strong, stupidly fast, and they destroy everything because their appetite is the size of mine. Yeah, it's huge. The story progresses, gets crazier, and you find out, like I said, spoilers everybody, that the gourmet continent that they travel to in the second half of the story holds the embodiment of an all-devouring, planet-eating god. Yeah, and they're gonna eat it up because this is a food manga. A cooking manga even, with adventure thrown in. And what do they do in the very end? They eat God. Now there is over the top action. I mean, the fights destroy mountains, change the weather. Uh, they get almost thrown into space by a volleyball game loving monkey called Banimba. And here's the other part. Banimba is one of the foods that they have to eat, kind of. Yeah, go figure. If you are not interested in action, stay away from the story. If you're not interested in just pure, thoughtless, mindless arcs, stay away from the story. If you think that there is nothing better to do with your time, then flip through 43 volumes of manga Stay away from this fast-paced, fun story. Overall, I would give this story a solid 7 out of 10. I recommend reading it because it just really keeps you at a high pace and keeps you bumping. The creativity behind a lot of the monsters, the food, the plants, the enemies is actually pretty top-notch. While it may not be the most original story out there, it does have a little special something for everyone, whether you're looking for guys with huge muscles in a power fantasy, uh, creative ingredients in recipes, or just the idea that you can have a bromance, this is absolutely the story for you. Don't forget to check down there for my latest Monday video. And as always, it's your boy Lohali, signing out.